So I'm here at Mobile World Congress Los Angeles with Radisys to discuss some of the major trends that are shaping the conversation here at the show. And Niraj, I feel like you and I have been talking about Open RAN for at least two years at this point, but it, I really feel like things have changed and that there's a lot of momentum. So maybe you can just tell us at a high level what's going on with Open RAN right now. So Open RAN has an initiative, has been around for a bit, uh, is being driven by the operators globally. And, you know, we all know the motivation for Open RAN. And it's in the very first four words, open. And it's all about, you know, the open architecture, open interfaces, open APIs, uh, open hardware. But, but why, right? And, 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 and what's happening is that you have these operators who have come together Alliances like ORAN Alliance, uh, the Telecom Infra Project, TIP, uh, ONF, Open Networking Forum. So there's a lot of momentum globally behind this initiative to see how do we actually take RAN, which is, I would say, by far one of the most complex pieces in this sort of telecom maze, and get this from its monolithic box, break it into disaggregated elements for having multi-vendors coming in for white box hardware, software-defined components from a software perspective, uh, and then adding layers in, which is where a lot of the work is going on today, is about how do you make this programmable? How do you make this you know, scalable? How do you make this manageable? And these are the various elements that are coming together as part of this entire open end initiative. Yeah, it's really interesting to think about the implications for network economics and vendor competitiveness as we move towards ORAN. So can you tell me a little bit more specifically about what Radisys is doing in the space? Sure, so on the very first point, right, uh, before I get to Radisys, uh, you touched a key element about the economics driving the vendor competitiveness. And what we are seeing is this range of what I would call disruptive vendors who are coming to the fore. Uh, we, we are starting to see news. Uh, if you pick up all these sound bites about, you know, people are progressing slowly but surely from just lab POCs and field trials into what we are going to start hearing about as commercial deployments or the start of the commercial deployments. And that's overall for the industry, if you step back, it, it's a great move. Uh, it really brings the openness into open. Uh, we now have multiple choices you're seeing an entire ecosystem, a very vibrant ecosystem of different vendors coming in. Uh, we hear words about, you know, this RU, DU, CU, um, the radio unit, the distributed unit, the centralized unit. And when you look at RAN, going from its sort of distributed RAN that we are all used to today into a more centralized, virtualized RAN. And when we say centralized RAN, it's like the BB hotels, a hierarchical network that is now running separate DUs, and the DUs are running multiple RUs connected to it. And this gives in auto scale. Uh, this is giving in different deployment scenarios that typically we weren't seeing earlier. Uh, and obviously it's, it's very use case driven, so it's not like you know, one shoe fits all, but now you have choices where the operators are able to leverage their spectrum efficiency, they're able to leverage their assets in terms of transport, uh, you know, is it fiber, what have you, as they bring this traffic, this plethora of traffic that we keep hearing, what we hear here, 5G is going to explode and bring thousands of different vertical market use cases in. It's allowing us to do that. At Radisys, firmly believe in that. Um, we are very active within the ORAN Alliance. In fact, we uh, are one of the vendor co-chairs, along with Intel, in Workgroup 8, which focuses on this reference stack architecture where we are contributing code for the DU within the Open RAN source community, OSC, under Linux Foundation. Uh, we are very active within TIP. Uh, we'll be at the TIP Summit uh, in the next two or three weeks, I believe. Uh, so you'll see announcements there about TIP and the initiatives, for example, in Open RAN 5G. Uh, and then ONF, uh, there's a program and a project that's going on at ONF that, again, Radisys is deeply involved in. Uh, from what we enable, you know, we are enabling open solutions, and by this, really, it is standard-based, but with APIs that we conform to from, for example, what ORAN Alliance is specifying. And this really lets you pick and choose, kind of like the Lego boxes, different elements, different vendors can now say, hey, I'm doing this DU, I'm doing this CU, but how do these communicate? And if that interface is open, that architecture is open, the APIs are open, the hardware is open, the software is open, now you're really building, sort of architecting a true open network. 
So you mentioned earlier the sheer complexity of RAN in its current form, and we're seeing a lot of that change with ORAN type initiatives, but help me understand how the complexity changes or maybe even grows when you go from a single vendor purpose-built solution to a multi-vendor open solution. Great question, Sean, because we all talk about, you know, all the benefits of open, all the network economics of open, uh, but as an operator, uh, you got to step back and say, hey, this is great, guys, but now you suddenly made my problem complex because now I have so many different boxes to manage. I have so many different vendors to take care of. So you have these procurement teams and the supply chain teams that are going, okay, I had solution A from vendor A, which has now become multiple solutions from multiple vendors. That's where an initiative that we are actually taking part in, that we've uh, championed along with Reliance Geo and China Mobile, China Unicom and China Telecom, and a host of other different vendors, folks like Samsung, folks like Lenovo, Intel, uh, buy cells, and there are multiple. Uh, it's an initiative called OTIC, Open Test Integration Center. What OTIC is, is basically the lab to test, validate, interoperate, do conformance testing, functional testing for multi-vendors with ORAN Alliance 3GPP compliant solutions. And Radis is, in our role, has the system integrator. We will be the SI for China Mobile in their lab. There's a plug fest that they announced last week at the Oran Summit in Costa Rica that we were all part of. And AT&T is doing a separate plug fest. And then we'll also be actually the ones who will be operating and managing Reliance Geo's lab that they plan to open next year. This lab in initially is going to focus on the functional and conformance verification, but it's also quickly going to evolve into, here are the elements, it's sort of a drop-down menu. I have so many elements on the RU, I have these elements on the DU, this on the CU. How do I now build this open network with tested, validated solutions so that I want to now operationalize and literally commercialize, because that is the goal that an operator wants on open solutions. Yeah, so it seems like there's a lot of uh, complementary things that are coalescing in a very big way right now. So I'm curious just to hear what you expect out of 2020 in terms of operators actually putting these solutions in the field? 2020 should be the tipping point where we actually see an adoption of these disruptive solutions on concepts of open actually getting into networks. They are already in networks today, but we, are, we want to see more of a mass adoption. The community, the operator is coming and saying, yes, we do want to see solutions that can be based on principles of open, carrying life traffic. I think that that's the shot in the arm that the industry needs. Uh, that's a validation that yes, you know, the principles of open are not just principles that we all talk in closed rooms and meeting rooms, but principles that we can actually see working in live networks. And we are seeing this globally. There's a big movement globally with operators participating across the world who actually want to take these solutions from multi-vendors and have a solution that is end-to-end -end tested, validated, programmable, manageable, bring the concepts of NFVI, bring the concepts of SDN on white box hardware and say, guys, this is actually carrying live traffic. Well, I look forward to seeing how it plays out and I certainly appreciate you taking your time to share your perspective. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you.